just got out of seeing Final Fantasy A New World, or A New World Final Fantasy, depending on what order you want to give the name of the parts of the subtitle in. This is the companion concert to the Distant Worlds Final Fantasy Orchestral Concert Series. If you're familiar with that one, or familiar with other video game concert series, Distant Worlds is the big orchestral video game music thing. You have a big multimedia presentation, you have a full orchestra in a big concert hall with lights and a choir playing the music from the games with footage from the games playing played in the background, and this isn't that. This is a chamber music experience. This is a chamber orchestra concert series. So, if you're not familiar with classical music, the next question that is coming out of your brain is, what is chamber music? What is a chamber orchestra? Well, chamber music is a much more intimate, more personal sort of way of presenting classical music. We're not quite at the, at the piece of music for a soloist yet. Yeah, we're a little bigger than that. It's generally, as they described as to say how big the concert orchestra was here, the chamber orchestra is was here. We have a string section of six. We had a maybe seven, depending on how you count it. We have... Uh, four violins, maybe a viola, maybe one of them was a viola, I couldn't quite tell from my seating position. We have, um, one or two was a viola, we have a bass, an, an upright bass, like full-size stand-up, you can't play this sitting down, upright bass. Um, and we had a cello, a cellist, and we had a guitarist, who also, for one track, played, um, a, oh gosh, name of the instrument that fell on my head, um, ukulele, ukulele, played a ukulele for one track, and if you know Final Fantasy music, you can probably guess what that piece of music was, if not, if you're spacing on it, it's yellow and has feathers. Chocobo thing. Um, we have a woodwind section of two, a uh, oboe, and I believe she, I believe the guy also had a bassoon, but we didn't play it very much, and a uh, flute. The flutes wood, yeah, woodwinds. Um, so yeah. Bass and um, the bassoon and the oboe are reed instruments. Kind of generally fit into the general overall woodwinds thing. And we had brass section of one, just a trumpet. We had, for a percussion, was basically a couple different versions of xylophone and a drum set with one percussionist and one piano. And that's it. Very small music section, the very small venue. We have, um, this was being performed at the University of Portland at the Buckley Center Auditorium, which is basically one of the larger classrooms, effectively. Um, larger lecture halls. In fact, all of the seats there had folded down the desk for you to fold up and Lay flat so you can take your notes if you need to. So we're, we're, we're not, it has really good acoustics, but this, we're not necessarily here. This isn't the place where you'd have your, this is a drama performances. This wouldn't be where you'd be, where the University of Portland Drama Club would be putting on a performance or drama society or that sort of thing. So, small venue, seats, probably a couple hundred, give or take. No vocalist either. So, uh, for, for the concert. 
So that gives you the idea of the scope of the performance. It's more intimate, more close in, and this affects in turn kind of the music that's being played. We did get a couple of the grand of the grander pieces done, because being that this is connected to distant worlds, as sort of a spin-off pe- um, performance series or a satellite performance series, this um, there's some common things that they do at every performance that expected. It's sort of like if you go to see Iron Maiden, they're going to play Iron Maiden. Like even if they don't do Number of the Beast, if they don't do Run to the Hills, even if they don't do Fear of the Dark, they are going to play Iron Maiden. And when they play Iron Maiden, Eddie's going to come out on stage. Video games for um, the Distant World series and A New World as part of this, you will get a Chocobo theme and you will get One Winged Angel. And this is kind of where how things get interesting, because when you hear One Winged Angel, every version of One Winged Angel I have heard prior to this has had a full orchestra and a choir involved. Whether maybe they also had a band involved as well, like, for example, the version of Unwinged Angel from Final Fantasy I've Been Children, but they all have an orchestra and a choir involved. Like, I don't think the Black Mages have done Unwinged Angel yet. If they did, they would probably do it at a venue where they could also have an orchestra playing and a full choir. Maybe they might drop the qua- drop the full orchestra, but they'd keep the choir. And this was a very interesting way to hear the piece of music. You hear one winged angel because with a small or with a, such a small group of players, the question is, does it still have that punch? And the answer is yes. It still carries that degree of weight to it in spite of the fact that you're hearing it in a manner that you've never heard it performed before, and with pieces absent that you normally associate with that. You don't have vocals, you don't have a full string section. You have strings, but you have a full string section, and all of the power that comes with it. So, that really made the piece interesting to hear. As far as the rest of the concert set goes, fortunately... They didn't have programs, so I can't go through everything that they had. Um, they mainly focused on mainline numbered Final Fantasy games. No Final Fantasy Tactics, which is a bummer because it's actually one of the pieces. They actually solicited requests on the Facebook page before the concert, and I contributed saying, Hey, I nor- we normally don't get Final Fantasy Tactics music during these, and there's some interesting and enjoyable music from Final Fa- from the Final Fantasy Tactics games. And that would be something nice. We didn't get any of that, but... mm, We got uh, music from... A nice mix of first ten to latest... We're on fifteen and latest five, actually. I I believe the better defining point would be... be Pre seven, post seven, because musically the vocabulary of fi- the Final Fantasy series changed dramatically when we hit Final Fantasy seven, and we got on a CD based system, and we have um, because of that we have CD audio, and we can get orchestral music and stuff. We we had sample based stuff on the Super Nintendo before, but your musical vocabulary boosts with the CD. And we had a nice mix of cartridge... This way to describe it would be cartridge-based games and disc-based games for the Final Fantasy series. We had some music from Final Fantasy... Uh, even, like, 14 got a track played from the Heaven's Word expansion. Nothing super-duper spectacular. But it was it was fun. It was um it was a good piece of music. I unfortunately I can't give names for most of them because again we didn't get the program. And the set list, while some of the music is on the album that they put out, there is a um 
they put out one album earlier, um, A New World, Intimate Music from Final Fantasy. Not everything is on there. Um, we actually got a whole bunch of stuff on this that was new stuff. Um, some stuff was, was repeats. We got the Rebel Army theme from Final Fantasy II. We got Xanarkin from Final Fantasy X. We got Those Who Fight from Final Fantasy VII, the, the, the battle music. But, like, we... Oh, and we got the Moogle melody, which is a nice bit. But we got stuff like... Um... That music from Five. And not a new world either. It was like a, like the battle theme from Five. Or one of the battle themes from Five. Um, not Battle on the Big Bridge, which, that's a big one. That's probably one of the longest, not, not the longest piece of the disc, of the cartridge based games, but it's definitely the point where Uematsu starts really pushing himself and pushing the limits of the, of the cartridge and the, Super Nintendo in particular for how much contiguous music you can store by putting together this big piece of music for the Battle of the Big Bridge, which obviously comes to, as far as for the cartridge-based games are concerned, comes to its natural conclusion with uh, Kefka and Dancing Mad, which that's a freaking big piece. And you do kind of need some choral stuff there. and you You need... Maybe not the full orchestra, but you need a lot. Uh, but the venue and the, and the size of the orchestra we got worked really well. It really made for a very different experience. If all of the video game music concerts you've been to have been the big, elaborate, orchestral spectaculars, like Video Games Live, like uh, Legend of Zelda, Symphony of the Goddesses, like Distant Worlds, this is definitely something worth going to because it very much makes the experience feel more personal. I mean, yes, you're sitting in a room with a couple hundred people listening to this music, but you can close your eyes and... Put your mind on the thing about the piece of music that you associate with it. It's not just, oh, it's the battle music. It's your mind can go, particularly if you have an association with playing these games, like a good mental association, go, oh, I remember playing the battle in the, uh, the various battles in the Final Fantasy games for the first time. I can remember the first time where you get off the train in Midgar and raid the first Maker Reactor. You remember, oh right, it's this forest and you uh, in, Final Fan in Final Fantasy IX and you remember going through that forest and carefully making your way through it and encounters and that sort of thing. So it, it was really good and enjoyable. There's a piece of music that I, now that I've been sitting and thinking about it for a bit, that I wish, kind of wish we'd gotten. We got, well, the music had a whole bunch of battle themes and some dungeon and overworld themes. I think that now they've heard some fan of Final Fantasy music in a chamber format, the piece of music that I wish I had, we'd gotten, we didn't, was the first overworld from Final Fantasy VIII, which um, which has a nice, neat little xylophone section to it, which would have been really interesting to get and give the a whole bunch more neat stuff for percussion to do. And also, like... Of the woodwind section, didn't get that much for certain chunks of it, particularly for oboe kind of did. But this was made for a neat little, basically, from what I remember of the piece of music, it's got a significant amount of xylophone and oboe, almost not quite a duet. Xylophone, oboe, and violin strings, but not 
bowing, but more plucking. Um, that would have been a, like, that would have fit perfectly. And I forget the name of the piece of music for that first overworld. I don't know if they played it before. In any case, the tour is still going on. There are going from the site eight more dates to go. Um, next two dates are in Canada. Um, one is in July at Anime Evolution in Vancouver, British Columbia. The next one after that is in Montreal, Quebec. Before coming back to the U.S. for three more dates in the Southwest. To then to Germany and Belgium and then wrapping up in Denver. So I will put a link in the show notes to the site for the concert series so you can get out. So you can either, if there's a venue performance near you, you can book a ticket. Or if not, you can get on the mailing list for the next time there's a con to get a concert near you. It's definitely worth seeing. It's if you listen to classical music, or, or if you're unfamiliar with classical music, this is a, a good way to experience classical music. When Video Games Live started, and when I listened to interviews from the founders of Video Games Live, they've talked about how playing video game music with an orchestra live is a great way to bring people who have never been to go to see the orchestra before and get them to do that, and get them to think about going to do that more, and getting them on the mailing list, and that sort of thing. I think that's a good first step, but the presentation is so far from what you'd think of for orchestra that it may not quite get you... That It doesn't necessarily get you all the way there. There's still a degree of tonal whiplash. I think a new, the A New World concert series is that good next step. It's the, still the music you're familiar with. It's the Final Fantasy music that you love, but it's being presented in a way... That is different. It's not the rock star presentation style or the rock concert presentation style of most of these video game music concert series. It's being done in a style that's closer to what you expect for classical music. Not what you expect, but what how classical music is often presented. But still somewhat informal, still less stuffy, still laid back and relaxed and you can come to this in your t-shirt, in your, in jeans and a t-shirt, if you so does, if you feel like it. So, if you've seen this concert series before, go ahead and post in your thoughts. Uh, I will try to put a link to the album that is out in the show notes. So, if you want to check that out and kind of get an idea of what this feels like, it's, they don't have a DVD. But this isn't quite something that works with a DVD, with a concert movie, because it's it's not a spectacle. It's like it's more intimate than watching Evening at Pops on PBS back when PBS showed Evening at Pops. It's a very personal thing. It's not personal. But it's a very small scale thing, and it benefits a lot from that. And it's it's chilled. It's la chilled. It's laid back. It's a good way to spend an hour and a half. And it's, my ticket was like 45 bucks, 40 bucks after fees. So as far as concerts go, it's not that expensive either. So thank you very much for watching. Again, post your thoughts about the Final Fantasy New World series. If you're interested in seeing it, if you've seen it before and want to share what you thought about it. Or if you've seen Distant Worlds or other of these video game concert series and went from there to going to see the orchestra more often. I'd like to hear that too. Again, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. 
once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.